Welcome back to the Tidy Room Hangout. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with a weekly news and review for July 12, 2020. 2020. A lot of great things going on this week. A lot of pictures, reveals, updates, all that great stuff. Coming up. First off, I want to talk about a few things that you could get at Show Z. X Transbots is on on an intergalactic mission to reissue everything, and they're going to reissue their Ages here. This is the Toon version. You're going to be able to get a shot at it. It's going to be 130. What I'm more excited about is Peon because they haven't reissued this guy in a while, and from what everyone says, he's the best version of Hoist. Look at that shiny green paint job. I look forward to getting a hold of this guy. I've got him pre-ordered. Go pre-order him now before they sell out. Also, it shows you don't forget the Transform Element version of Mirage, or you can wait two years for fans' toys. But the thing is, this guy's only 72 bucks. It's a good price. I know that their Prime was well priced, and and the Prime is pretty solid. I bet this guy's gonna be really solid. I'm looking forward to it. I got him coming. And I also want to talk about shipping times from Show Z. Now they put on their site 20 to 30 business days saying that 20 to 30 business days would be five business days per week. So that would be somewhere between four to six weeks shipping time. And for me, I just put in my head two months. Then let's give you some numbers. On the 1st of June, I got my shipment of Iceman sent out and I got Iceman today. Well, technically yesterday, so on the 11th. So that is less than the 30. So it's right in that range, about six weeks. And that's what's going on in the world today. I'm okay with it and I accept it. It's not that big of a deal. So one of the most exciting things that's going on this week that I saw was the KO version of MP44. Now this guy's gonna be like 75 bucks or something like that. Uh, you could pre-order yours at Show Z right now. And the thing is that it appears to have a great looking paint job, just as good as the original. And it also appears to have a lot of improvements and it seems like it's tighter, like the legs, with the legs are kind of loose. They kind of move around a bit. And this has tightened it up. So I'm looking forward to getting my hands on it and checking it out and seeing the differences between the two. But what I gathered from this video, because it was not in English, what I gathered from it is that it is an improvement. There's a lot of improvements to it. And so, don't know about build quality, don't know a whole lot of details, but I can tell you that I like the way it looks. Next up, we've got pictures of fans' toys. I think it's called Dune Rider. I, I, I have to check every time, but anyway, this one is the alt mode version. Shows how you can store the gun. Shows how clean the alt mode looks. I thought it's a pretty nice, clean looking alt mode. Uh, pretty tune accurate. It's a dune buggy. I know a lot of people are kind of going back and forth discussing if this one looks better in this alt mode than the X Transbots. And a lot of people I have heard say they want to put their X Transbots in alt mode and the fans toys in bot mode or vice versa. And then, then of course, there's always the debate which one's better. I only want one. So uh, we can't make that debate till we get it in hand. But it, this thing is clean all the way around. And fans toys does some magic with clean modes and. The price you pay for that is a is a crazy transformation, but it still doesn't look like it'd be that hard. So looks like Fans Toys is putting out more pictures of their Soundwave, kind of teasing us for Soundwave. We've gotten quite a bit from Fans Toys, and I will admit that a lot of their stuff is exciting. But when it comes to like a super core character like Soundwave, I I think that's even more exciting. I think this is more exciting than a lot of the other things going on. It looks really good. I mean, this looks good without the paint. I know uh, one of the things that somebody had said about a car, in the car world, if you paint your car white, you can see all the imperfections in it. And that kind of reminds me of this grayscale when they make the prototypes and then the first shots and all of that, that you can see all of the imperfections in it. And this thing looks pretty darn near perfection. I mean, just imagine what this thing's gonna look like when it's painted. Look how clean it is all around. Yeah, there's screw holes in the back, and that is one thing a lot of people complain about is screw holes in the back, but 
on the flip side, where would you put the screw holes? And I prefer them on the back, but it still looks pretty good from behind. I think it's a great looking mold. I'm excited for it. I look forward to it. And another week goes by. It can't be a week without a Thomas teaser. A teaser for Thomas. Fans Toys Thomas. This thing is just looks huge. Either, either that hand is really, really small. Or this figure is huge. Some people are trying to say it's going to be about the same size as Galvatron. I think it's going to be about a half a head taller than Fans Toys Galvatron. It's going to be taller than that. I mean, he's going to be on at least on par with Cyclonus. So there's uh, a lot of buzz around some movie masterpiece stuff going on and I want to talk a little bit about this ratchet and how it's going to be $120 at Target. And here's what I don't understand. Target can partner up and get a movie masterpiece version of a Bayverse figure for $120 that normally retails closer to $200. But we can't get Hound, RC, or any of the G1 ones that I believe are in higher demand. The reason I believe they're in higher demand is because I would not have any trouble getting my hands on any of the movie masterpiece figures. And, and for the most part, I could get them locally at comic shops. I have gotten them on clearance at comic shops. So thinking about it like that, how come the G1 figures and all of these other ones that are coming out for three, four hundred dollars can't get partnered up with Target or another one of these retailers for a cheaper US release? I don't understand that. I don't understand why this gets it, but nothing else does. Speaking of movie masterpiece, we have box images of Starscream's box, and there he is. He looks interesting in the box there. And here's the back of the box. And yeah, there it goes. They've got the packaging ready, so it's probably coming out soon. So Banana Force is now showing an upgrade kit for their, I guess they're calling this a crowdfunding set. I mean, that doesn't make sense. Like, okay, whatever. These parts should have come with it, shouldn't they? I mean, that's what I'm thinking. Like, you already have a high price point on this figure. Why not uh, put the parts with it? But anyway, you're going to get a sword. You're going to get uh, the fire engine ladder kind of deal. A gun, an upgraded gun, uh, some back piece, antenna pieces, a chest plate. So, uh, but still, I'm where I where I am with this whole situation is I feel that should have already come with it, and it's just funny when a company makes their own product and then they sell you an upgrade kit like like super parts. I don't know. So let's talk about some combiners. I've got this picture of what's supposed to be Fans Toys combiner parts. Now. This doesn't tell me much to tell you the truth. I really don't know a lot about it. So here's what I'm guessing. Number one, you're going to need the legs on this sucker to hold it together. So if, if I'm right on that, the legs are going to be holding the lower part together. Maybe that's true. Okay, so, so that's one assumption or guess that I'm making. Another assumption or guess that I'm making with this is we don't really know 100% how the rest of it goes together. But uh, with that, you will, of course, need every piece, every figure to build it. And so, so with that, I think that there's some good and some bad to it. I mean, we know with Zeta, you could build, uh, you could build the Superion without it. With DX9, you could build uh, with DX9's figure. You just need the trailer and the two arms, and you don't need any of the other stuff. Uh, so it, it's just interesting how. You're gonna, it's gonna require it for this one. So you're asking me, how does this combined mode stack up to the rest of the combined modes? Well, let's see here. So we've got a picture of the cartoon in the top left. Right next to it, you get what appears to be the Fans Toys version. Right next to it, you get what appears to be the X Transbots version. And then going down to the bottom left, you get what appears to be the DX9. Well, I know that's DX9. You can tell by the lower legs. It's just the blockiness of it. Now, when you get to the one next to that, I, I assume that's Rising Force, but I really don't know which one that is. And then the very bottom right-hand side, that one is for sure the Legend Scale Magic Square. So this is how they all look if you want to check that out. Taking a closer look at this Magic Square one, so here he is. Uh, I'm starting to wonder the scale on this because 
I thought it was nine inches, but if you look at it, you kind of look at the Prime and the Megatron, which, by the way, I'm checking out the Prime and the Megatron over here. Uh, I'm looking forward to their Megatron, and that, that, that zeroed in on that Megatron right away. But if you stack those two four-inch figures on top of each other and add an inch, this thing looks like it's closer to ten inches than nine inches, which nine inches kind of been the combiner scale in the Legends for a while. So anyway, it's going to be taller than the rest of them. And this is going to be a $150 set all together if you're looking at it and saying, hey, each one you buy. So that is going to be quite pricey for Legends, but it does look pretty good. And Magic Square almost always just nails that sculpt. And how long till we get that Megatron anyway? Alright, so looking into more of the Legend scale figures, we've got the McFans Toys Thunderbolt, which is their take on Blitzwing. I do have to admit this figure looks good. I really do like what McFans Toys has been doing these days. Mechanic Studio, Mechanic Toys, whatever name you want to call it. Here is the tank mode. That thing is clean. That thing is nice. It looks really good. And where'd they hide the tank part? On this jet mode again the jet mode is clean the jet mode is smooth the figure looks great I look forward to getting my hands on this guy yeah gold gold figure would be happy with this guy we have new age gold repaint of their reflector before their original reflectors out I gotta tell you we're probably gonna get eight different colors of this guy I, I kind of guessed it last week when I was talking about them, but I didn't guess I'd do gold first though. So they, they got me on that. They got me on the Gold Lagoon right away. But it looks good. Uh, I, I think that when they get to the tune colors and they have the whole tune package, that's the one I'm probably going to go with. But this gold, it works too. Here's what it looks like in the camera mode. And, you know, again, the camera is still going to be too big for, say, an MP to hold it or carry it around. That's just three Legends figures together is just too big for an MP. But it still looks cool, still a lot of fun, and they do include a small camera accessory with it. So we have Iron Factory IFEX 45 Yoroi. Is that what they're calling this thing? But anyway, this appears to be their take on their Leo Prime. Uh, okay, saying all that right, I hope. It looks pretty cool. You know, that's one thing about Iron Factory is that they do make some very interesting looking designs. They're not truly adhering to G1 or any lore. They have their own style, their own stylization to it. And it looks good. It looks pretty cool the way they did this guy. Here he is in his lion mode. And it, from this angle, I just didn't get a really good shot. I couldn't see a good shot that showed it. I would have liked to have seen a side shot. and. The pictures I was looking at, I didn't find one. But it's it looks like it's a little off. Like the front is wider than the rear. Uh, that seems just a bit off to me. Maybe that's correct. I just uh, I just think it looks a little off. But aside from that, I like the paint and I like a few things about this. Pretty cool. So we got a lot of pictures of stuff that we've seen in the past, but they're new updated pictures or updated to me. I haven't seen them, and so I'm going to share them with you. But I'm not going to show every picture. Just the ones I think are the best. So this is the good old fashioned run amok. And I'm sure we're going to get a repaint into the runabout. Or a recolor of the plastic. It probably won't get painted. <laughs> anyway, it looks good in both modes. This is of course the wheel jack. And uh, I like the wheel jack. And I, I, I thought the wheel jack looked... This, the alt mode didn't look enough like the G1 type alt mode. And now I kind of understand why. Because they had plans to use it for a multitude of different uses and now it sort of makes sense why they didn't make it look exactly like the G1 so that they could easily make it fit a bunch of different molds. And moving right into Sunstreaker here. So yeah, Sunstreaker does look pretty good. Aside from the lower legs, I think they go up a little bit too high. But of course that's to make for the transformation to be pretty simple. Looking at the alt mode itself, I think it looks pretty good. The alt mode does look like a Lamborghini. It looks great. And, and they were able to incorporate that top piece. Now, I think that's going to be just a removable gun, of course. Here he is from the back, and yeah, looks pretty good for a Hasbro version. 
So I don't usually get too excited about the Studio Series stuff, but this Blitzwing looks good. I think this thing looks clean, it looks nice, and there's a couple things about it. The fact that it actually is pretty big, it's pretty good size. I like the size of them. I like the bigger bots the most for whatever reason. That's just kind of my preference. And so that really does stand out. And his alt mode is pretty sweet. It is, it is a nice looking alt mode. Great looking figure. So more pictures of Airwave. And so I guess I got confused and thought they were showing off two different figures. They were just showing one. And so here he is. And he's going to be slightly shorter. I guess slightly shorter than the first one we got, but definitely taller than Cliff Jumper. Here he is in his components broken down. It's going to be the same type of transformation, I'm sure. And then again, here he is in one of his base alt modes, which I guess he's going to have a few. There's the back of it. Doesn't look bad. And then here's another one of his base alt modes. And then yet again, another base alt mode so a lot of different modes a lot of functionality a lot you could do with this guy next up on the fun train here we have the alicon now again i'm probably gonna end up buying three of these i just think that these are something that would be like an army building a troop building i really hope they pack at least two per uh, case in this because it's going to be pretty popular especially for people who like to buy multiples of them and we really don't have any good ones on the market at all whatsoever okay so he is going to be kind of short though I, I would have liked him to be a little bit bigger but i guess how big would he really be and he's still beefy so there's a lot of plastic going into this guy so definitely still worth your 20 dollars and we got to talk about rc for just a little bit the earthrise rc i kind of lined up my own pictures but nothing really says it like this Side by side, I'll let you guys decide which one you like better. Which one do you think looks better? So on the left is the 30th anniversary. On the right is the new Earthrise. And Earthrise has been killing it with every single release. I don't think they killed it with RC. In fact, I think they did a better job with the 30th anniversary Generations one. But the thing is the backpack. It's all about the backpack. And I think that the backpack's better on this one. But it's parts forming so it doesn't count. I mean, really, the other one would still look better if you, you just used the Wee Zhang parts forming. Well, I, I think it was Wee Zhang that made one that, that's bigger and a whole section of the car comes out. And so the backpack looks a lot better. But anyway, I think it's a little step backwards. Here's the alt mode. And uh, compared to, I guess this is the Chromia this alt mode is okay i mean it's not bad this is kind of like something you'd expect from the cyberverse series but then when you compare it to the 30 30th anniversary that one wins in alt mode again so it, it's still in my opinion not gonna beat the classic that's already out now i'm gonna still get it i'm gonna review it i'm gonna do it side by side and i'm, I'm gonna get one and keep it but the thing is that i just don't Think it's going to be as good as the 35th anniversary one and i thought that one was great when it came out not perfect and i was kind of hoping we'd see improvements on that mold but we'll see the good thing about it is she does look good in a group shot with everybody she still looks okay just not as good as the previous rc hasbro's made and we've got some more pictures and videos of smoke screen smoke screen looks good I, I think that this bot looks good, and I really think we're going to see Prowl and a couple of the other Dotson Brothers coming out soon. It's it's just inevitable. Here's the alt mode, and the alt mode looks nice, too. So so they did good work with this, and the Earth Ride, what, the one wasn't bad. It just wasn't Earth mode. It wasn't Super G1, and we're getting that Super G1 with this. So the next HasLab is going to be this Marvel Sentinel. So the thing about this is that it is, what, almost twice the size of the original version that was made. I believe it was a Build-A-Figure. The one next to it's about 16 inches. This one's gonna be 26 inches, so it's 10 inches taller. 
it's not quite as tall as Unicron, but getting close to the size of Unicron. And the thing about this is that, yes, you can tell it's bigger. Yes, it does look a little bit better. It has electronics in the chest and all that, but all, all that's cool. But it's already funded in two days. They wanted to set a target at like 7,000, and it got funded in two days. Uh, I got an email. I wasn't even really in on it. Like, I'm not going to be part of this, but I got an email that got funded from HasLab, the Hasbro Pulse. So that's like the fastest funding ever of a HasLab project. So just to get you an idea of scale, he's going to come with a standard sized exclusive figure. This exclusive figure is the standard six inch size of the Marvel Legends figures. And that's how big he is. That is the size of this guy. And so when you look at it like that, you put it on that scale for 350 bucks, that's what you're getting. now. I kind of feel like uh, could have been done cheaper by the Jack Specifics that did those giant 36 inch figures. I don't know why they never put one out. If they had put one out, uh, then it would be a different story, I think. But now this guy's going to be 350 a piece. Why did this thing fund so fast? Well, it funded so fast because it's my understanding that people like to have multiple Sentinels in their collection. Like three, five, and someone said ten. That's a hefty chunk of change, 3500 bucks for this thing. But to have ten of them, but I think that's really why it sold out. And it's something that fans really want. They're going to put their money behind it. They're going to back it. But I've never, never, ever would have guessed it would have gotten backed this fast. So there's some cool stuff going on with Star Wars and their lightsabers. And this is the Darth Sidious lightsaber uh, that they're going to put back out. Uh, they're going to put it back out with the Ultimate uh, Edition. They're, they're going to call it the Black Series Elite version of the Force Effects lightsaber. So this picture is of old ones, so just so you got an idea what it looks like. But that's what it's going to look like. It's, it's pretty elegant. It's probably the smallest hilt aside from Yoda's. But uh, it's a lightsaber that's commanding a high price already. But now you got to pay a high price. It's gonna be like 250 to 300 dollars to get into it because I know the the Darth Revan one is 250 and it's the new Elite version. So I would rather had a standard one and just got it for like 150, but I guess that's not an option these days. Looks like in the Black Series world of the Star Wars figures, these are actually shipping. Last week I was talking about where I got mine, Hasbro Pulse. Hasbro Pulse has billed me, and now they are shipping. It's shipped. I still don't have it. Feels like it's taking forever, but. But it's okay because I already got my Carbonite. So the Han Carbonite has shown up. It has arrived. And I think it's really good that they put this back out. Now you're talking about reissues. This is something that was only available for a really expensive uh, SDCC exclusive set. Now they're putting this back out. But it's not exactly the same. And I believe... The one on the left is the new one, the one on the right is the original one, so this is a lighter one with a bit of a wash. I don't really care. Uh, they finally put this out, you put it next to your Boba Fett, and it makes sense. I'm glad they did it. That works. So there is rumor that there's going to be a new exclusive four pack of clones. Now this picture, I typed in four pack of clones and this is what came up. But this is an old Amazon exclusive. But the new one coming out is rumored to have Rex in it, Jesse, the 322nd Clone Trooper, and a generic Phase 2 Trooper. That's the rumor. That's what I'm hearing. And for people who like clones, it makes a lot of sense because the Clone Wars series just came to an end. And it seems like this is the heightened era of clones right now. We're also getting card art of this Chirrut Imway. And the cool thing about it is that it looks good. It looks great, and this figure is kind of a cool figure. And it's good that we're actually getting new figures. But I kind of want to see us round out the last 96. I think that's kind of one of the things that everyone's holding their breath for. And I wonder if when they round out the first 96 figures of the original Kenner lineup, then the vintage collection might end with that. So maybe that's why they're not doing it. But anyway, this figure looks good. And there is something called the Walmart Collector Con that is going to happen 
on the 17th at 10 a.m. Eastern, supposed to unveil 70 exclusives from top brands, all different brands from Star Wars to G.I. Joe to Transformers and other stuff. So with all of that, I'm curious how this goes down, what exclusives there's going to be. I'm sure with Walmart, they secure the most exclusives, so there's going to be a whole lot to find out about. Let me know what you think about this week's weekly news in review. Is there anything else that's really cool and fun going on out there that I missed? Because I'd really like to know. Like and subscribe. Tiberium Hanger out.